So I've had a few questions about how I've winterized my bike and prepared it for the rigors of the Canadian winter and basically how I'm avoiding frying all the electronics from the salt and the water and the slush and the snow that I'm riding through. So I'm just going to hit on a few of the key areas of the bike uh, that I've taken steps to prevent damage from occurring. So the area I live in has a lot of hills, pretty steep ones between sort of 9 to 15 percent in a lot of places. Um, also get a lot of ice and snow, so what I'm going with are fully studded tyres. These are the Terrain Cake Eater type. They're 33 TPI, which apparently means threads per inch. So they're not the lightest tyre, but they certainly do the job. They have these wicked flat studs here. And a really nice tread pattern. So this is quite a soft rubber, so it really helps with gripping the road in winter. I've uh, not encountered any problems with these so far, and I've been riding in quite a lot of ice and slush, over the top of ice, compacted snow, trails, and they haven't slipped out on me once. So definitely, uh, definitely worth the investment if you're riding in winter is some decent studded tyres. A lot of the issues that I've been getting have been involving slush off the road and dirt. So I've put on these, what they call the front runner and the rear runner at the back. And they're basically the cheapest things I could find. Um, apparently this type of material is, is pretty tough and durable. We'll see. Um, I'm on the lookout for something better. Um, this one up at the front isn't perfect. As people saw in my last ride, the camera is still pretty vulnerable to getting splattered with stuff. And it is coming up a bit at the front, so I maybe need to put something else on the wheel. But I couldn't find anything um, that goes on the front. So if anybody has any ideas for a good mud guard for the front wheel, um, let me know in the comments. That'd be brilliant. As far as the cabling goes, it's not my neatest job. Um, and I've got a bit more tidying to do. Um, but everything is high go, um, so it's sealed against the weather anyway. So I don't have to worry too much about the top here. Uh, there's a, as we come down to the bottom here where the motor is, everything that I can, uh, I shrink wrapped and waterproofed. Um, I've tried to put drip points in where possible, so if water runs down the cables, it's going to drip down to the ground. Again, most things are high go plugs. Um, the battery, at the moment I'm running 52 volts because um, I'm not going to be needing the higher power. Uh, on the city streets. So I have the battery coming up and the connections going into the bag here and I'm also going to be putting a cover over the top of this to help keep any sort of splash or rain off. Um, the back itself is waterproofed and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how I've done all that in just a moment. For the wiring with the motor, just as a little bit of added protection, I put some silicone around where I think potentially the weak points might be. I did manage to preserve the original gasket when I switched to the uh, the ERT kit here. Um, I've also put a bit in the hole. It looks pretty crappy right now, but this is actually gonna dry clear. It's not gonna be a permanent bond, and come spring I can clean it all off, give the BBSHD the service that it's probably gonna need by then, i.e. a re-grease. Maybe I'll try the lunar steel gear at that point, see how that works out. Um, but yeah, it's basically just to protect it. Um, everything else here is just going to run straight off. Um, this unit's pretty protected anyway, um, so shouldn't have any problems there. One of the first things I made when I got my 3D printer was a mount for the back 800. Looking at it now, it looks pretty crude, but it did the job for the summer. It does not address the main point of weakness with the back 800, which is the wiring harness. The controller itself, as well as the phase wires and battery connections, are rated IP67, so no real problems there. It's the loom that deals with the hall sensors, as well as PAS, the speed sensor, display, brakes and throttle, that is not protected in the same way. I've gone for a combination of dielectric grease on the connector itself, as well as heat shrink and wrapping. The new mount also has a cover plate for the wiring, so spray from the road along with dripping water is kept well away from the connector. A few people have been interested in this mounting piece, and I will be able to alter the design according to the down tube shape of people's bikes, 
and send them a custom STL to be printed in their local printing shop or at home if they happen to have a 3D printer. I'll talk at the end of the video on how you can do this if you're interested. The mount itself is comprised of the main body, a cover for the wiring, and in addition you're going to need four M4 bolts. Uh, I've done the holes so they're countersunk for this version. Two M5 bolts and also two strips of Velcro or you can use zip ties if you want to. I'm also as added protection using some clear drying silicone to seal around the edges of the plastic and the metal. The Velcro straps are put through the mount before the back 800 is dropped into position. Before doing this, I ran a small bead of silicone around the edges of the plastic. The back 800 is held in place with two M5 bolts through the side of the mount. The mount is then attached to the down tube with the Velcro straps or zip ties if you prefer. The final part is to attach the cover for the wiring loom and it's held in place with four M4 bolts. Again, I use some silicone to make a seal with the back 800 first. I wanted to touch briefly on the gear ratio I'm running, which is this one to one ratio of a 42 tooth on the front to a 42 tooth on the back. The chain I'm running is this seven speed or six, seven, eight speed, I think they call it. And it's some pretty tough KMC stuff. I've not had any problems with chain stretching, even running at the 72 volts. Um, I was a bit worried about when I started getting on ice and snow that it would be almost too much torque with that big gear. But in fact, it seems to be doing a really good job and I'm not really getting much slipping. And I think a lot of that is due to the parameters that are set on the ASI back 800 and the way power is delivered steadily and not all at once through the system. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I've had a few more requests than I was expecting for the back 800 mount. And in order to manage this, I've set up a fairly simple web shop and the link will be in the description. I'm not asking for a huge amount, just uh, 10 Canadian dollars, and it will help me to buy some more plastic for developing parts and perhaps the odd can of beer too. If people make an order, they're going to need to send me an email as well via the web form on the site and detail a couple of things for me. One is the shape of the back 800 they have. It looks like ASI have several versions in circulation where the dimensions of the part indicated here can vary. I need to know the size on yours. I also need to know the shape of your bike's down tube or if you want a flat base. The curve can be custom shaped to fit pretty much any tube. Also, if you want a logo on there, you're going to need to send me a black and white image. and I'll let you know if I can fit it in the real estate that there is. So that's a bit of a summary on how I'm keeping the bike running during the winter months. Uh, if anybody has any questions or wants any more detail on anything in particular, leave me a question in the comments section and I'll do my best to, to get back to you. Cheers.